What up, though? Welcome to Gangsta's Paradise. This is where I kick cautionary street tales. Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and click the little bell. That way you can get notifications for whenever I drop a documentary. Support Gangsta's Paradise by purchasing a Don't Judge Me t-shirt, My City Get Money t-shirt, or Detroit Money Getters t-shirt. Available now on Teespring. I appreciate you guys checking out Gangsta's Paradise. Been super busy lately. I have two broadcasting programs that I'm running right now. And then I have my other small businesses. So just been super busy, just working. You know, I like to check out the comment section. So I'll, I want to send a mad salute to Maximilian Genius. CP was the only black man to shake hands with El Chapo. I appreciate that comment. Salute to Drug Lord and shouts out to Cornell Lee for this request. For this one, I'm going to take it to St. Louis, Missouri and the Grand Sheik, Jerry Lee Lewis Bay. I am excited because I get a chance to use my new studio equipment. And I'm also working to make these documentaries more professional. It's a work in progress, but I'm getting there. Mad salute to the Latin counts. Salute to you brothers. I'm trying to put something something together for you guys. I appreciate the support. But you know, I don't want to beat the audience up with all cover stories from Detroit. You know, but Detroit, I promise you guys, I'm coming back to you. I got some stuff in the works, so I just want to send a mad salute to the Latin counts. But for this one, again, right now, it's all about St. Louis, Missouri, and the Grand Sheep, Jerry Lee Lewis Bay. I like St. Louis. I think it's a unique town, a unique city with a lot of history. I've been there quite a few times, uh, just hanging out, just rolling through the city. I never hung out in the hoods down there. When I went there, pretty much just stayed downtown. Just checking out some of the scenery, some of the history down there. But you hear a lot of stuff about St. Louis, you know. Um, they consistently on the news with, with you know, crimes that's go down, that goes on down there. And um, they always highly rated when it comes to national ratings, when it comes to crime. So, you know, they get down and dirty down there. As a matter of fact, one of the terminologies they used down there was dirty. <laughs> you know, that's, that's some of that St. Louis slang. Their baseball team, St. Louis Cardinals, has a very rich history. They even beat my Tigers in the World Series. That was Super Bowl that they won when the LA Rams was once the St. Louis Rams. Other things that are St. Louis's claim to fame. Ice cream cones. The, gate, the Gateway Arch. I've been to the Arch. I checked it out. It was sweet. That's like an iconic symbol of St. Louis. You know, anytime you come to St. Louis, you're looking for that arch. Anytime they post a picture of the the skyline of St. Louis, you're going to see that arch. So it's a lovely thing. You know, it's a, a, a good symbol for the city. Then you have the Dred Scott decision, Anheuser-Busch Brewery, T.S. Elliott, Josephine Baker, the 1904 Summer Olympics, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. St. Louis was an important venue for early blues and jazz, as well as country and bluegrass. And you know, they had some le legendary artists from down there in terms of rap music. You got the St. Lunatics, you got Chingy, you got Jaquan, and I'm sure they got a bubbling scene that's going, down, going on down there right now. You know, and I just want to remind the audience, you know, when I get these requests, I try to do as much homework as I can about these cities or whatever, and it may seem a little bit off. That's because that's what they put on the internet. You know, it's not like I go down into these cities and really hanging out in the hood or whatever, because I did the one with about Columbus, you know, and somebody came in the comment section talking about I didn't mention some hood or what hood was adjacent to the hood I was speaking about in that documentary, you know, and, and you feel like there's been, your hood is being left out. I mean, you're more than welcome to get on YouTube and just start your YouTube channel, you know. You can yell out your hood, you know, you can make a hundred different videos yelling out your hood, so, you know, 
I try to do the best I can with these things, but I'm sorry if I can't mention every neighborhood or I can't mention everybody in the clique, you know. I don't have a small amount of time here, you know, and these are documentary shorts. So, and that's what I, I consider a documentary short. So, my apologies if I'm missing some hood or something like that, you know. But again, you're more than welcome to get on YouTube and start your channel, and you can make a hundred different videos mentioning your hood. By the way, family, subscribe to this channel, click that like button, click that little bell, that way you can get notifications for whenever I drop a, doc drop a documentary. But back to St. Louis, like I said, I like the town, you know, I've been there quite a few times. I think it's a, a nice town, but you know, a lot of the places got their underworld. And again, this is by request. And when you think about St. Louis, you will hear the city being mentioned in mafia movies or mafia documentaries. So it was definitely a part of the, the mafia scene, scenery, the mob. You had people like the St. Louis crime family or also known as the St. Louis Mafia, which was an Italian American Mafia crime family based in St. Louis. And this group was aligned with the Kansas City crime family, the Chicago Outfit, and the Detroit Partnership. And on the black side of things, or the African American side of things, you have a guy like Terry Cooley, you have guys like the Petty Boys, and you have another interesting guy called, they call James Fats Woods. He's another interesting guy. Another interesting place in St. Louis was the Pruitt Igo projects. Apparently it was going down in that projects right there. You know, now I gotta come back and do another St. Louis story because I look at some of these stories and again, I thank y'all for, uh, for the request. Um, but, you know, there's some interesting things about these guys, like Grand Sheik Jerry Lewis Bay. It's some political ramification surrounding the Grand Sheik. He believes law enforcement was after him for many reason, reasons, with one being that he was very critical of the local, the local government there in St. Louis. At least that's what the news reports say. The government accused Lewis Bay of running a multi-million dollar drug empire. You know, that's what they do when you're a part of a group or a part of a clique or a gang or something like that. They blow it up in the media and all of a sudden you run this multi-million dollar drug empire. You know, Even if you're not a part of a clique, they'll make up a clique for you. you know, they, they routinely do that. And I say that in a lot of videos. If you, if you are in desperate need of a name for your clique, the government is more than willing to give you one. That is a fact. Even if you're not even a part of a gang or a clique or some type of group. And I took a moment just to look up what is the Morris Science Temple of America. It is an American national and religious organization founded by Noble Drew Ali I heard that name before. I think I may have did some research about Noble Drew Ali sometime in the past, but it hasn't been recent. Uh, you know, people start their own religious sectors. You know, they do it how they do it, much like the Nation of Islam. They got like their own form of Islam. You know, it's no different than Christianity or any other religion. You know, people start their own sector or how they do it and people start following it. You know, he based it on the premise that African Americans are descendants of the Moabites and thus are Moorish by nationality and Islamic by faith. He put out a book entitled Government's Target or Gangster. And in this book, I believe he laid out how he was railroaded in his case. Uh, in his case, he ended up getting life in prison and I believe he's still trying to fight those charges and clear his name up, but he wrote this book while being locked up, government's target or gangster. So according to him, there's a lot of political ramifications surrounding his case and why they came after him. Click that subscribe button, family. Click that like button. Click that little bell. That way you can get notifications 
for whenever I drop a, drop a documentaries. And go check out my other documentaries. You know, I got other good cover stories. Go check out my last one where I took it to Columbus. You know, I got a lot of great cover stories already out there. So go check those out as well. Jerry Lewis Bay was the Grand Sheik of the Morris Science Temple of America. In the 1970s, he was known as a major drug dealer. When I look into those stories in St. Louis, it was going down in the 70s, uh, particularly around that project, the Pruitt Igo project, housing project, it was going down out there. And in 1978, he was paroled, and in 1979, he legally incorporated the Morris Science Temple of America in Missouri. And, and he started making political connections. You know, this is where it gets tricky at, and this is why he believed that he was targeted because he had so many political connections. He had so many connections, and he was being critical of the government there in St. Louis. You know, when you in a religious sector and you got people believing in what you're saying and you building a following and you got political connections yeah eyes are going to be on you but you know according to these news reports they always consider him a drug dealer um, you know he made his he established political ties with u.s congressman william clay of missouri mayor vincent uh can't pronounce the last name of st louis U.S. Senator Christopher Dodds of Connecticut, Mayor Harold Washington of Chicago, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, he had a lot of connections politics-wise, you know. He even had connections with Minister Lyndon O. Pendley of, of the Bahamas, U.S. Ambassador to Morocco, David Robbins, Morocco Ambassador to the U.S., Mato Jarrio, Morocco Minister of State Moule. You know, this guy was on some international stuff, but you know, that goes along with the Arab. You're talking about the 70s, but it looks like this guy had been around for a long time because around January 1991, Louis Bay and 14 others were indicted under the racketeering laws. They hit him with the RICO. You know, they come with that RICO, they're talking about a lot of time at that point because they accusing you of running a continuous criminal organization. I did an episode titled Family Cartels and I talked about a pair of brothers out of Detroit named the Powell Brothers and they were a part of the more science temple religious sector. I'm not saying that these, these cases connected with the cases that happened in St. Louis back in those times or any type of connection with the religion or the church or anything but you know, these guys be religious, balling, balling religiously. <laughs> They're in the Christian church, so you can't knock people religions, you know, because you got a couple of hustlers going through there. But, you know, I still, I want to remind everyone that this is intervention and prevention. You know, I'm, I'm not about promoting the next kingpin or, you know, talking about violence or promoting violence and shoot them up, bang, bang, gangster, gangster. You know, and I understand that people really want to hear that type of stuff, but I'm not here to actually promote that. I'm really here to stop people from actually following that manufacturing line of kingpins and ballers. I'd rather have a manufacturing line of executives and people with trades and building equity over time making sound investments that grows over time. That's just how I think as a business person. Like I say, I have small businesses, you know, so I got to think on the business level. So I'm not here to actually promote the next person being the next kingpin. And make sure y'all go to Team Spring and support Gangsta's, Pro Gangsta's Paradise merchandise, you know, t-shirts on deck, you know, raising funds for a special project. Uh, so go over there, support Gangsta's Paradise, grab your t-shirt, appreciate it family, click that subscribe button, click that like button. And I want to appreciate people that's been calling and really complimenting Gangsta's Paradise. I have a lot of people calling me, um, saying shouts out to this program and you know, a lot of people listening to it, especially around the Detroit area, you know, it's starting to grow, it's reaching into other areas, reaching into other cities, other regions. 
You know, I got a couple, some people listening to it from the UK, some people listening to it from Canada. You know, so it's starting to grow. Like I said, it's a work in, pro in progress, but I do appreciate the, the compliments I get in the comments section. I uh, appreciate the com compliments people calling me and telling me they like the program, they like the cover story. So I appreciate y'all really checking this stuff out. You know, I got a lot of content coming. So, you know, just be ready. You know, I'm just going to be coming at y'all. You know, I got so many cover stories. You know, I know I tell a lot of Detroit stories. You know, that's because I'm from there and I'm, I'm sort of like grassroots. And a lot of people listening, you know, a lot of people listening and seeing what I got to say, you know. People leaving comments in the comment section say I'm not shouting them out or, or whatever, you know, but, you know, I'm putting my head together with a lot of people, you know, and come up with something special. So we're going to keep working at this. And like I said, it's, it's just a brand that's just, just consistently growing. So I appreciate all that. But as it say here, his introduction into the drug underworld, Jerry became involved in selling eight balls quarter spoons and half ounces of drugs you know you, you know when people do cover stories and they talk about drug dealers and they mostly talk about kingpins and to me all this money i don't care if you're selling eight balls or you're selling kilos you know all this stuff money to me you know that's just my opinion other people may think differently you know but it, like you say here in a short time he was able to reach multi-millionaire status you know Obviously, his, his thing took off and rather quickly. You know, he started catching cases. In 1972, he was arrested on federal drug charges, entering a plea of guilty. 1972, he got caught with a gun, which he got found not guilty on that charge. You know, when you start going to jail and, you know, you start building up all these charges, you really start building a pattern of yourself. Because the first thing they're going to do is look at your background and say, okay, you got a pattern of this X, Y, and Z. So they start to expect that from you because that's what you've given them. That's the charges you're catching. 1975, he was placed under arrest for a, a double homicide, which he was let go. He was just questioning it in that case. You know, you're catching these cases in and out of jail, you know, and eventually he became affiliated with the Morris Science Temple of America. On authorization from the U.S. Justice Department of Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, the investigation was opened on May 23, 1983 on Jerry Lewis Bay and the Morris Science Temple of America in St. Louis, Missouri. Again, off the top, they tag you with the organization that helps you, that helps with their case. If you don't have a name for your organization, the federal government is more than willing to give you one. But this investigation right here ended up closing with no arrest. The investigation lasted for three years, three or four years. It lasted to around 8, 1987, and they closed the case with no arrest. But the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, the RICO, indicted January 9, 1991. Bay and 13 others were charged with a total of 11 murders, conspiracy to commit murder and drug conspiracy. And I was just telling somebody recently, once you, in my opinion, once you become on the Fed's radar, they keep you on their radar. It's not like they just say, forget it. Uh, we going this way. We're not going to look back at you or whatever. It's like once you go on, get on their radar, you stay on their radar. Even if you go do your time and come back, you know, they still sort of keep tabs on people, you know. At least that's my opinion. Tell me what y'all think in the comments section. If you become on the radar by the feds, do you think they keep tabs on you? Let me know what y'all think. That's just my opinion. On September 24th, 1993, Bay and his co-defendants were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. They hit it with that RICO, you know, they gave him life without the possibility of parole, but he consistently to this day is appealing his case. Instead of the receiving 17 and a half years call for the federal sentencing guidelines for second degree murder charges based on Bay's criminal history. Remember, 
they always go back to your history. Once you start going to jail, you start getting hit with all these cases. They start looking at your background. You, you start to design a pattern, a mental pattern to these people, to the law enforcement. You know, looking at his criminal history category and a offense level, the judge used a preponderance of evidence standard and sentenced Bay and others based on his findings, not the jury, to the life term based on first degree murder and over 213 kilograms of cocaine that was never charged by the grand jury in the indictment nor presented to the trial jury. So like I said, to this day, he continued to appeal his case. He believed that he was railroaded by politics you know, he's making a lot of connections with people internationally, locally, congressmen, dealing with all these mayors and really spreading the brand of more science, tology. You know, but to this day, he's continued to appeal the case. This is Gangsta's Paradise. Share this episode. Click that like button. Tell a friend. Subscribe to this channel. Be looking for more content, family. It's coming at you. One love, one love, family.